once again christian greetings to all our valued listeners and viewers throughout the whole world more particularly to all shepherds rod believers and most especially to our beloved brothers and sisters in the united states of america special greetings to our brethren in colorado in pg island in mexico spain in africa to the united kingdom and also to our brethren in australia and to the rest of the 144,000 living saints scattered abroad greetings may the good lord bless you and have a wonderful evening this is our episode number 16 on the subject the 12 figurative months we already explained as stated by the shepherd's rod in track number five page 74 that the particular object in view on the subject the 12 figurative months is the five figurative months but the given clue in the 12 figurative months is the first six figurative months and secondly the particular object in view concerning the subject the five figurative months is the ingathering of the 144,000 living saints and also the period of time by which the 144,000 living saints are sealed. Now, reading again in track number 5, page 74, saying, It will be noted that the 144,000 are called the first fruits, denoting that they are sealed at the beginning of the harvest and according to answerer number two on page 36 it says it shows that the harvest is a period of time having a beginning and ending and that during its time men are saved so the harvest time is divided into two division the first division is called the beginning and the second division is called the ending the word beginning and the word ending is a noun a gerund and a gerund it is a noun derived from the verb in ing form beginning and also ending meaning progressive so the word beginning is a period of time having its commencement and end part as well as the period called ending or in other term closing there must be commencement and the end part now i would like to connect white house recruiter on page 37 and page 38 it says tragically those who now fail to fill their vessels with this extra oil the additional truth that of the judgment of the living flowing from the golden bowl will finally see their lamps flicker out forever like a gathered candle oh in what consternation then will they search for the freshest golden oil and with what infinitely greater anxiety than they now search for gold and for fresh things but alas then like Esau, though they seek it carefully with tears they shall find no place of repentance they purchase their oil too late the door is closed when they reach it and to their frantic knocking at it comes the terrifying reply i never know you matthew 7 verse 23 then is the harvest of the first fruits past the fruits garnered in and the tears shut out unto destruction there in agony to wail and to gnash their feet the harvest is past the summer is ended and we are not saved white house recruiter page 37 and page 38 such statement can be easily understood that both sections is finished or it is closed by saying the harvest is past when the first section of the harvest which is the beginning is finished jeremiah 820 cannot yet be applied 
for according to answerer number 2 page 36 during its period men are saved so the period of beginning and the period of ending both are provisionary time and during its time men are saved therefore the statement saying the harvest is past and the summer is ended can be easily understood that both sections are finished now since the shepherd's rod plainly told us according to 1sr on page 29 saying the 144,000 having this seal are also marked sealed by the angel of revelation chapter 7 which is the same as the one of ezekiel 9 in other words it may be termed a double seal only the living saints more particularly to the 144,000 living saints by which the shepherd's rod declared clearly that they obtain a double seal or in other words the sealing of the 144,000 living saints is divided into two phases the first phase is the sealing which is the present truth the only sealing that pertains to the dead it says here in 1 sr page 28 according to these scriptures which are plainly stated we must conclude that the saints of god are sealed with present truth in all ages and whatever that present truth is that is the seal without any doubts the statement in 1 tg 31 on page 8 saying there is no bible truth plainer than this and there is no truth as important at this time as is this truth these are the very reasons that it either saves or destroys to accept it is to have all your sins blotted out to reject it is to sin against the holy ghost the present truth mentioned or the truth mentioned here is the present truth because that is the sin against the holy ghost according to 2 sr page 198 saying the rejecting of light and present truth is the sin against the holy ghost and whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, meaning speaketh against the present truth, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. Matthew 12 verse 32 Our attitude towards present truth would either make a tree good and his fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt. For the tree is known by his fruit. Verse 33. Thus, present truth has the power to change the individual and fit him for eternal life, which is the seal of the living God. Say Jesus, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of god john 3 verse 5 and we know that born of water that is the baptism by water and born of the spirit that is the baptism by fire only those who will be born of the water and of the spirit can enter the kingdom of god to us our page 198 now let us go back again to our uh, subject and since we already um, explained that the harvest has two sections beginning and ending and in that two sections of the harvest which is the first section of the harvest can be easily understood that the first section of the ceiling is concerning the present truth by which the focal point is the sealing of the 144,000 in the heavenly sanctuary 
Whereas the second section of the harvest, which is the ending, is the sealing of the 144,000 on the earth by which they will be granted by the mark of deliverance or called as the seal of protection. But we already explained several times that the only people by which they will be granted with the seal of protection are those people whose names had not been blotted out, who survived the judgment that pertains to the living. Now let us go back again to our reading. In track number 5, page 74, it says, It will be noted that the 144,000 are called the first fruits, denoting that they are sealed at the beginning of the harvest. To repeat again, since the entire period of the harvest, that is the time by which the 144,000 are sealed, then logically, the beginning of the harvest by which the 144,000 are sealed is pertaining to the sealing that occurred in the heavenly sanctuary. And the sealing of the 144,000 that occurred on the earthly sanctuary is called the ending. Then after the second section of the harvest is finished, then that is the time by which the sinners will cry out bitterly. The harvest is past. The summer is ended. And we are not saved. That is their testimony. By which the shepherds that says, only experience can tell the sorrow and grief it says here in 1 SR 185, the disappointment to such a one would be greater than we can realize. Experience only can fill the sorrow and grief at such a time. 1 SR 185. And I think this statement is directly applicable at this present time. Now, I would like to read to you in 1 TG 21, page 21. Most Christians know that there are two classes in the church, wheat and tares, but few, if any, seem to care. We as reformers do, especially since we have been given this great light on the subject, cannot afford to be indifferent. We may now intelligently choose to be with or foolishly choose to be tares. If after knowing this truth, if after knowing this truth, some choose to be theirs, they, of course, will have gained nothing and need not be surprised when they land in hell. What does it mean by choosing to be theirs? Refuse to listen to the revelation of this message, the same as in the days of Noah, as stated in 2 SR. 183, that the experience of the foolish virgins is the same of that of the deludes. They paid little attention or no attention at all with the message. But when the door is closed, that is the time, brothers and sisters, that they zealously desire to know the truth. But it is too late. 1 TG 50 page 15, life is but what we make it. It says, but all perish as fools only because they had failed to give heed to present truth, had failed to feed, had failed to feed on meat in due season. What fool, what disaster. Now let's go back again to our main subject. And I do fully believe that those who are hungering and thirsting for truth and righteousness, God will give them wisdom and understanding to comprehend his message. Now, let us read again track number 5 on page 74. It says, It will be noted that the 144,000 are called the first fruits, denoting that they are sealed at the beginning of the harvest. So they are sealed at the beginning of the harvest. The commencement of the time to separate the tares from the wheat. Then it says to the parable 
of the harvest, then we must go for the full explanation of the five months period. Or in other words, the subject concerning the five figurative months can never be understood unless we have a complete understanding concerning to the parable of the harvest as explained by the shepherd's rod in track number three. Or in other words, the subject concerning the five figurative months is closely connected with the entire subject deal in track number three, particularly to the subject, the harvest. Now, let us read the next paragraph in track number five, page 74. In track number three, the harvest, the time from the baptism of Christ to the close of provision is shown to be illustrated by 12 figurative months. Six from Christ's baptism to his crucifixion. Five from the crucifixion to the ingathering of the first fruits, the 144,000. Revelation 14, verse 4. Leaving one month for the ingathering of the second fruits, the great multitude, in Revelation 7, verse 9. Now let us focus first our attention to the five figurative months from the crucifixion to the ingathering of the first fruits, the 144,000. And the quotation is Revelation 14, verse 4. And I think it is in absolute necessity to read Revelation 14, verse 4. It says, These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. Revelation 14, verse 4. The most important part on that verse that I would like to emphasize is the statement saying, They follow the Lamb wherever the Lamb goeth. The term Lamb indicates the proceedings in the heavenly sanctuary. So thus, description given to the 144,000 living saints to be gathered are those people by which they studied closely the proceedings that occurred in the heavenly sanctuary. The same with the statement on the great controversy, let's read, 488, 488, it says, those who would share the benefits of the Savior's mediation should permit nothing to interfere with their duty to perfect holiness in the fear of God. The precious hours, instead of being given to pleasure, to display, or to gain seeking, should be devoted to an earnest, prayerful study of the word of truth. The subject of the sanctuary and the investigative judgment should be clearly understood by the people of God. All need a knowledge for themselves of the position and work of their great high priest. Otherwise, it will be impossible for them to exercise the faith which is essential at this time or to occupy the position which God designs them to fill. Every individual has a soul to save or to lose. Each has a case pending at the bar of God. Each must meet the great judge face to face. How important then that every mind contemplate often the solemn scene when the judgment shall sit and the book shall be opened. When with Daniel, every individual must stand in his lot at the end of the days. The Great Controversy, page 488. Now let us go back again to our main subject, the 12 figurative months. The shepherd's rod admonish us to link such subject to the subject concerning the parable of the harvest. And such subject is explained on its entirety on track number three. We already read 
according to the shepherd's rod. But the, the parable illustrates by 12 months. Now, I would like to read again. Track number three, pages 54 and page 55. It says, This parable, therefore, illustrates by the 12 months of the year, a period of gospel history in the closing of which the kingdom of Christ is to be set up and the beginning of which is the seed sowing time when thus the kingdom of Christ is to be set up. It says, in the closing, in the closing period of the gospel history. And that period of the gospel history is illustrated in the parable by parabolical 12 months or 12 figurative months since the shepherd's rod admonishes us to connect our study the 12 figurative months to the parable of the 12 parabolical months clearly indicates that they were closely connected with each other and the shepherd's rod admonishes us that these three periods the sowing, the growing, and the harvest, it says, must together be perfectly calculated to illustrate the spiritual kingdom. Otherwise, the representation can only lead into error instead of into truth. And there is no such calculation by which it does not deal with numbers. Calculation always deal numbers. So the subject concerning the 12 parabolical months in the parable of Jesus Christ is a Bible numerology or studying the prophecy by numerics as stated in 1SR Packet Edition, page 37. And also the statement in track number 3, the supplement on page 64, saying numerical illustration of in gathering track number 3 1934 edition the supplement page 64 numerical illustration of the in gathering and that is called bible numerology now let us focus first the 12 parabolical months divided into three divisions sowing growing and harvest whereas the 12 figurative months on the subject, the trumpet study, also divided into three divisions. The first division is the six figurative months. The second division is the five figurative months. And the last one is leaving one month for the great multitude. Track number five, page 74. Now let us focus first to the 12 parabolic month in the subject. The harvest. So let us read 2TG number 44. 2TG number 44 on pages 32 and page 33. Quoting Matthew 13 verse 24 to verse 30. It says, This parable of the kingdom, you know, contains three periods of time. First, the period of sowing the seed, the time of Christ's ministry, then it says, second, the period of growing, the time from the ascension of Christ to the harvest. Third, the time of harvest, a short period of time at the end of the world. Matthew 13 verse 49, the period in which the earth is lightened with the glory of the angel. Now, I would like to focus first to the first section of the harvest. Let us distinctly separate the second section, which is pertaining already to the great multitude or the second fruits. According to track number 3, it says, track number 3, page 70, the second section of the separation thus being completed provisionary time is close. Whereupon from the wicked will be heard the horrible wail of doom. The harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we are not saved. Jeremiah 8, 20. This being the dreadful experience of the tares in Babylon in the second section of the harvest. There must, as a type, 
be a similar and precedent experience for the tares in the Laodicean church in the first section of the harvest. Track number 3, page 70 and page 71. So the first section of the harvest is in the Laodicean church. And the second section of the harvest is in Babylon, according to that reading. Track number 3, page 70, page 71. Now let us focus our whole attention to the first section of the harvest by which we are involved. In the second section of the harvest, we are no longer involved because that it, it pertains to the second fruits, the great multitude which no man could number. Now, according to our reading, the gospel history is divided into three divisions, sowing, growing, and harvest. Now, let's read track number three. Track number three on page 55 and page 56. It says, track number three, pages 55 and page 56. There being a period of church history illustrated by this 12-month harvest, so let's read again the statement. There being a period of church history illustrated by this 12-month harvest, 12 month harvest period, we must therefore find the time of its beginning, the time of seed sowing, and the time of its closing, the time of reaping. Now let us go to page 58, track number 3, page 58. The three and one half years from the beginning of Christ's ministry to his crucifixion being the sowing time and the harvest time being the end of the world. Then the intervening period in the time for the growing and ripening of the grain, also the tear sowing time. Track number 3 on page 58. Among the three periods, the given clue is only the sowing time. The shepherd's rod made it so plain that the sowing time consists of three and a half years. Track number 3, page 58. It says the three and a half years or the three and one half years. Being the sowing time, it says the three and one half years from the beginning of Christ's ministry to his crucifixion being the sowing time. Now, let us connect the statement in track number three. On page, uh, track number three, page 56. He that soweth the good seed, says Christ, is the son of man. And the enemy that sowed the tares is the devil. Matthew 13, verse 37 to 39. The son of man, he who soweth the good seed, is of course none other than Jesus Christ. But as he could not be called the son of man before being born of a woman, he accordingly could not have sowed the good seed of his spiritual harvest until after his birth in Bethlehem in Judea. As his ministry, his sowing of the good seed, the truth, the good seed, which is the truth, began right after his baptism. But the quotation is Matthew 4, verse 17. What is Matthew chapter 4, verse 17? That is after the wilderness temptation. Within 40 days, Jesus was alone in the wilderness. He did not preach the gospel during that time. He was alone. In the wilderness, fasting, meditating, and under temptation of Satan. Now, if, brothers and sisters, the sowing of the good seed commenced after the wilderness temptation, then there must be a time discrepancy. There must be time discrepancy. Because three and one half years, that is exactly 1,260 days. 1,260 days, brothers and sisters. But that 1,260 days that ended at his crucifixion began on October 16, 2780, the baptism of Jesus Christ. So the question is that, does the sowing time begin on October 16, 2780? If the sowing time began on October 16, 2780, then there are 40 days before such preaching of Jesus Christ continued and secondly brothers and sisters there are also three days before the commencement of the wilderness temptation the 40 days 
Because according to the shepherd's rod, in Anserer number 3, page 13, I would like to read a statement. The eighteenth day of the seventh month, the first day of the wilderness temptation. Anserer number 3, page 13. The eighteenth day of the seventh month, the first day of the wilderness temptation. When does Jesus Christ was baptized? Let us read track number 3, page 57. The fact having been established, see illustration on page 55, that the three and one half years of Christ's ministry terminated on the 16th day of the first month, April 16, 31 AD. Then counting three and one half years, follow the illustration on page 55, we find that his baptism took place on the 16th day of the seventh month, which was in the week of tabernacles and the celebration of which was the end of the agricultural year, the close of the harvest. So that is very plain. Jesus Christ was baptized October 16, 3 p.m. Friday, 27 AD. But the wilderness temptation took place on the 18th, April, uh, October 18, 27 AD. So if you will look at our simple illustration, um, uh, let me see if we could have that diagram. Illustrating the 40 days, April, uh, October 16, uh, 164, the coincidence. Diagram 164, the coincidences. Now, let me show to you first. This is 27 AD. October 16, 27 AD, Friday, the day when Jesus Christ was baptized. Now, after Jesus Christ baptized, October 17, 27 AD, that is Sabbath. Where did Jesus Christ spend the first Sabbath after his baptism? Because the shepherds were declared clearly that the wilderness temptation, the 40 days fasting in the wilderness, started on April, October 18. October 18, 27, 80. That is Sunday. And ended on November 27, 27, 80. Thursday. Now, after the wilderness temptation, brothers and sisters, the first Sabbath is November 29. Where did Jesus spend his first Sabbath after the wilderness temptation? And the shepherds had declared clearly that it is in perfect parallelism with the year of the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ was crucified on April 16, 31 AD. Jesus Christ was baptized on October 16, 27 AD. The wilderness temptation started on the 18th of October. Jesus Christ was resurrected on April 18. The 40 days wilderness temptation ended on November 27. The 40 days from Christ's resurrection to his ascension ended on May 27. And from May 27, 10 days later, the Pentecost was poured out to the 120 disciples, which will correspond to the second, the second Sunday after the wilderness temptation, December 7. But concerning the, the ministry of Jesus Christ, as far as the Bible is thus concerned, it is always pertaining during the Sabbath. There are three Sabbaths here, brothers and sisters. The first Sabbath after Jesus Christ was baptized is October 17. Where does Jesus Christ during this Sabbath, October 17, before the 40 days temptation in the wilderness started? And the first Sabbath after the wilderness temptation, November 29. Of course, um, October 24, then November 1, or 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. These five Sabbaths, Jesus Christ spent it in the wilderness alone, fasting, meditating, and under temptation, being tempted by the devil. Does Jesus Christ entered into the synagogue in October 17, 27 AD? Does Jesus Christ entered into the synagogue in November 29, 27 AD? 
that Jesus Christ entered into the synagogue in December 6, 27 AD with these three Sabbaths. What Sabbath recorded in Luke chapter 4 that Jesus Christ entered into the synagogue? That is very important historical event. Now, let us read 2TG, 2TG number, number 13, pages 10 and page 11. So, we are still studying the first period of the parabolic harvest period or the 12-month parabolic, uh, parabolic period of the history of the gospel or the gospel history. By which we focus our attention first to the statement in track number 3, page 58, that there are three and a half years of sowing time. So, in that three and a half years, which is ended to the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, the shepherds had made it so plain in track number 3, page 57, counting backwards three and a half years, then it would fall on October 16, 27 AD, the baptism of Jesus Christ. Thus, the three and a half years is exactly 1,260 days Jesus Christ continually preaching the gospel. How about the 40 days wilderness temptation? By which at that time, Jesus Christ was alone in the wilderness. If we will subtract 1,260 minus 40, it must be only 1,220 days. So the absolute question is that, does the 40 days wilderness temptation is a part of the sowing time? Or in other words, does the period of time when Jesus Christ was alone in the wilderness, does Jesus Christ is still sowing the good seed, the truth? Now, I would like to read first this reading. And that's why we called it the figurative 40 days, the mystical number 40 days. And that mystical number 40 days is the absolute answer with the statement in tract number 3, pages 54 and 55 and 56. It says, This parable, therefore, illustrates by the 12 months of the year a period of gospel history in the closing of which the kingdom of Christ is to be set up. When does the kingdom of Jesus Christ is to be set up? In the closing. Closing of what? The parable of the harvest. It is not in the beginning, but it is in the closing of which the kingdom of Christ is to be set up and the beginning of which is the seed sowing time. So the kingdom of Christ, it was not set up on the first advent of Jesus Christ because that is the beginning. The seed sowing time is the beginning. The beginning of the period of the gospel history by which such period of the gospel history was illustrated by the 12 month parabolical man. What kingdom to be set up? That is a spiritual kingdom as stated in the upper paragraph. Now let us read. The seed sower, the seed, the field, the season of cultivation and growing and the season of harvest. So the three periods are mentioned in this reading. Sowing, growing and harvest. By which these three periods must together be perfectly calculated to illustrate the spiritual kingdom. Otherwise, the representation can only lead into error instead of into truth. What kingdom illustrated by this 12-month parabolic period of the gospel history? The spiritual kingdom. How many periods by which the 12-month parabolical month were divided? Three periods. Sowing, growing, and harvest. So that is very plain. In order to illustrate the spiritual kingdom, what is the admonition given by the shepherds? Right? These three periods must be perfectly calculated. Perfectly or exactly. And since that is the admonition given by the shepherds, right? that is why we are now trying to compute, to calculate the three and a half years stated in track number three, page 58. Now let us read again the statement. 
the three and one half years from the beginning of Christ's ministry to His crucifixion being the sowing time. Since it need to be perfectly calculated, not only the harvest, but first of all, the given clue is the sowing time. If we cannot be able to perfectly calculate the sowing time, there is no possibility that we could be able to ascertain clearly the parabolic harvest. The parabolic harvest period. The shepherds who had made it so plain. In track number 3, page 56, let me read to you. As his ministry, his sowing of the good seed, which is the truth, began right after his baptism. But the quotation is Matthew 4, verse 17. What is Matthew 4, verse 17? That is after the 40 days wilderness temptation, by which, according to answerer number 3, page 13, ended on November 27, 27 A.D. So if that is the commencement of the sowing time, November 28, 27 AD, then it could no longer exactly three and a half years to the crucifixion. We are studying now the three and one half years. Why? Because that is the admonition given by the shepherd's word that unless these three periods will be perfectly calculated, there is no possibility that such particular object in view will be illustrated the establishment of the spiritual pre-millennial kingdom now i would like to read again track number three page 56 as his ministry his sowing of the good seed which is the truth began right after his baptism matthew 4 verse 17 now if the 1260 days commence after the wilderness temptation, Matthew 4, 17. Now, let me show to you the time and that, that come calculator. Bible calendar. November 27, 27 AD. Then let us add 1,260 days. Then you will fall on May 27, 31 AD. That is the ascension of Jesus Christ. But the shepherds had made it so plain. In track number 3, page 57, if you will start April 16, 31 AD, the crucifixion. April 16, 31 AD, then count backwards, subtract. 1,260 days, then you will fall in October 16, 27 AD. That is the perfect calculation. Exactly three and a half years. Exactly 42 months. Exactly 1,260 days. So, that is very plain, brothers and sisters. Now, I would like to read again, track number 3, page 56. It says, As his ministry, his sowing of the good seed, which is the truth, began right after his baptism, Matthew 4, verse 17, Therefore, to establish the beginning of the parabolic harvest period, we must ascertain the date he was baptized. In this reading, we can easily discern that the word of God is admonishing us to perfectly calculate. From the baptism of Christ, October 16, 27 AD, brothers and sisters, to April 16, 31 AD, which is exactly 1,260 days or three and a half years. Now, to go back again, the quotation here in track number 3, page 56, the statement began right after his baptism, that is after the wilderness temptation. So there is missing 40 days. Now let us, Read again the statement in track number 3, page 54 and page 55. Track number 3, pages 54, 55, and page 56. This parable, therefore, illustrate by the 12 months of the year, a period of gospel history in the closing of which the kingdom of Christ is to be set up and the beginning of which is the seed sowing time, or that is... Brothers and sisters, the first advent of Jesus Christ, the beginning. The beginning of what? The beginning of the period of the gospel history. When does the kingdom of Christ to be set up? Is it in the beginning? No. The shepherd says, in the closing. In the closing. What kingdom mentioned here to be set up in the closing? The spiritual premillennial kingdom. 
not the literal premillennial kingdom. The spiritual according to the first paragraph that in order to illustrate the spiritual kingdom, these three periods must be perfectly calculated, sowing, growing, and harvest, and only the sowing time by which the given clue given by the word of God, the very first one that we need to perfectly calculate. And in such perfect calculation, from Christ's baptism, October 16, 27 ED, to April 16, 31 ED, exactly, exactly three and a half years, brothers and sisters. That is exactly three and a half years or 1,260 days. But to convert it to hours, 1,260 times 24 Therefore, that must be 30,240 hours. But it could not be exactly 30,240 hours. Why? Because Jesus Christ was baptized in 3 p.m. October 16, 27 AD. But Jesus Christ was crucified in 9 a.m. So how many hours from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m.? Six hours. Therefore, if you will put an exact 30,240 hours. It must be from the death of Jesus Christ, 3 p.m. From the baptism of Jesus Christ, October 16, 27, it is 3 p.m. Exactly 30,240 hours at 3 p.m. when Jesus Christ died on the cross. But the statement to the crucifixion, and Jesus Christ was crucified at 9 a.m. Now let us go back again. On page 55 and page 56. There being a period of church history, there being a period of church history illustrated by this 12-month harvest period. So it says, there being a period of church history illustrated by this 12-month harvest period, we must therefore find the time of its beginning, the time of seed sowing, and the time of its closing, the time of reaping. Now in this reading, the only that had been mentioned is sowing and reaping. The growing period were not mentioned in this reading. And the admonition given is that we need to find the time of the beginning of the time of the seed sowing and the time of its closing. The same with the time of reaping. We need to find the time of its beginning and the time of its closing, and also called ending. The harvest is a period of time having a beginning and ending. Answerer number 2, page 36. But the absolute fact is that not only the harvest, the period of the harvest, which is divided into two divisions, but as well as the sowing, the sowing period is also divided into two divisions, Beginning and closing, how many years the sowing period? Three and a half years. Track number three, page 58. The three and one half years from the beginning of Christ's ministry to his crucifixion being the sowing time. So what is the sowing time? According to the voice of inspiration, the entire period of the sowing time, three and one half years. When would be that three and one half years culminate? To his crucifixion. When does the crucifixion of Jesus Christ took place? Track number three, page 57. On the 16th day of the first month. Then counting three and one half years backward, we find that his baptism took place on the 16th day of the seventh month. October 16, 27 AD. Now, when does the sowing time begins? At his baptism? To repeat again. When does the sowing time begin? Is it from his baptism at the time when Jesus Christ was baptized? The shepherd's rod does not say that. The shepherd's rod made it so plain. Track number 3, page 56. As his ministry, his sowing of the good seed, which is the truth, began right after his baptism. Right after. The sowing of the good seed did not begin at his baptism, but right after. His baptism. But the question, when? The quotation is Matthew 4, 17. Now let us go to the Bible. Matthew chapter 4, 
verse 17. Because that is the quotation given by the shepherd's rod. It says, and I think it's necessary to read verse 10 and 11. Then said Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. So that is after the wilderness temptation, after the 40th day. Now when Jesus had heard that John was cast into prison, he departed into Galilee. And leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum, which is upon the sea, upon the sea coast, in the borders of Zabulon and Nephtalem, that might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, The land of Zabulon and the land of Nephtalem, by the way of the sea, beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people which sat in darkness saw great light, and to them which sat in the region and shadow of death, light is, is sprung up. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. This is the quotation in track number 3, page 56, Matthew 4, 17. From that time, what time? From the time when the 40 days wilderness temptation ended. Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That is very plain in the Bible history. But the question is that, since the shepherd's rod admonishes us to perfectly calculate the three periods, sowing, growing, and harvest, and the most important part, brothers and sisters, is the closing. The closing of the sowing time and the closing of the parabolic harvest period. Why? Because that is the time by which the kingdom of Christ is to be set up. Now the kingdom of Christ, which is the spiritual kingdom, it is to be set up in the closing period of the sowing time. But the premillennial literal kingdom will be set up in the closing period of the harvest time. Let us go back again. And I know it is a deep study, but it is a precious truth. So I would like to read again the statement in 2 TJ 44, 32 and 33. This parable of the kingdom, you know, contains three periods of time. First, the period of sowing the seed, the time of Christ's ministry. Second, the period of growing, the time from the ascension of Christ to the harvest. Third, the time of harvest, a short period of time at the end of the world. Now let us focus first to the commencement, the beginning period of the sowing time. When does the beginning period of the sowing time commence? The answer is found in track number 3, page 56. Begun right after his baptism. The word after his baptism, therefore the sowing time did not begin on October 18, uh, October 16 rather. Why is it that the shepherd's rod, I would like to read again. Why is it that the shepherd's rod admonishes us that in order for us to establish or to ascertain clearly or to establish the beginning of the parabolic harvest period, we must ascertain the date he was baptized. There is a truth that had been buried beneath the surface in this paragraph. Track number 3, page 56. I would like to read again. As his ministry, his sowing of the good seed, which is the truth, began right after his baptism. Matthew 4, 17. Therefore, to establish the beginning of the parabolic harvest period, we must ascertain the date he was baptized. The answer is found in track number 3, page 57. When does the date by which Jesus Christ was baptized? October 16. October 16, 27 AD. What is the admonition given to us by the shepherd's rod? Let us apply first to the sowing period. These three periods must together be perfectly calculated in order to illustrate the spiritual kingdom. Otherwise, the representation can only lead into error instead of into truth. What is the given clue? The sowing time, the sowing period, or the period of sowing. Therefore, first of all, we need to perfectly calculate first the given clue. If, if we fail to perfectly calculate the given clue, then there is no possibility that 
we could be able to ascertain clearly the particular object and view. Because when you fail in numbers, then all the following numbers will be in error. And that is the reason why the admonition perfectly calculated. We need to prove what the shepherd's rod teaches. How many years the sowing time? Three and one half years. Track number three, page 58. How many years the sowing time? Three and one half years. Or 42 months. Or 1,260 days. It is not only the harvest by which divided into two periods, beginning and closing, but as well as the sowing period, beginning and closing. Brothers and sisters. And the admonition given in track number 3, page 57 and 58, saying we must therefore find the time of its beginning, the time of seed sowing, and the time of its closing, the time of reaping. Now, I would like to ask again the question, when does the kingdom of Christ is to be set up in the closing? Track number 3, page 54. What kingdom is spiritual kingdom? The spiritual kingdom, the spiritual premillennial kingdom is to be set up in the closing. Closing of what? Closing of the seed sowing time, brothers and sisters. Or in other words, the beginning of the sowing period at the first advent of Jesus Christ. It is the type, but the closing period is the anti-type, which is illustrated by that figurative 40 days the mystical number 40, by which at that time, the 1,260 days in the beginning period of the sowing time is not exactly 1,260 days. Because it commenced on November 27, 27 ED, and ended on April 16, 31 ED. By which, brothers and sisters, there are missing 40 days. And that missing number 40 days, the mystical number 40, is the closing period. That missing number will be fulfilled in the closing period of such seed sowing time. The perfect fulfillment of that prophecy in Isaiah 61 verse 1 and 2. That is the very verse preached by Jesus Christ in the synagogue of Nazareth. And the only question is that, let us go back to our diagram that coincidences. Brothers and sisters, which Sabbath by which Jesus Christ entered into the synagogue of Nazareth? Is it the first Sabbath after the wilderness temptation? Or is it the second Sabbath after the wilderness temptation? The first Sabbath is November 29. The second Sabbath is December 6. Our attention will be focused only to the first Sabbath. And the second Sabbath. But for sure, one of that two Sabbaths, Jesus Christ entered into the synagogue of Nazareth. Now, let us read 2 TG 13 on pages 10 and 11. It is concerning the bottomless pit. Satan had shut up into the bottomless pit the entire Jewish nation. The only nation that had previously been out of the pit. Christ therefore came to open the pit. And to let the captives go free. To such a world was the Lord of heaven sent. And when he came, he immediately declared. Luke chapter 4 verse 18 and 19. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the broken hearted. To preach deliverance to the captives. And recovering of sight to the blind. To sit at liberty them that are browsed. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. So Luke chapter 4 verse 18 and 19 has an important rule. And uh, studying this very important subject. Now let us read 1 SR. Although we'll continue in our next episode. Here in 1 SR page 153. The first verse and part of the second applies to Christ himself at the beginning of his ministry. Now, let us compare again. Track number 3. Track number 3, page 58. The three and one half years from the beginning of Christ's ministry to His crucifixion being the sowing time. When does the sowing time commence? 
at the beginning of Christ's ministry. When does the beginning of Christ's ministry commence? Begun right after his baptism. Track number 3, page 56. And what is the quotation? Matthew 4, 17. And here in 1 SR 153, it is the time when Jesus Christ entered into the synagogue of Nazareth on that Sabbath. It says, at the beginning of his ministry. Now let us read the statement. 1 SR 153. The first verse and part of the second apply to Christ himself at the beginning of his ministry. The spirit of prophecy says, it will repeat itself with the people of God. This would find its fulfillment in the time of harvest with the 144,000, those who escaped the ruin of Isaiah 59 and 63, by whose effort the great multitude of Revelation 7 verse 9 is made. 1 SR 153. Isaiah 61 verse 1 and 2 will repeat itself with the people of God. This is the answer, brothers and sisters, to complete that three and a half years, the missing 40 days is found in the repetition of that prophecy recorded in Isaiah 61 verse 1 and 2. By which, when Jesus Christ read that verses in the synagogue of Nazareth, he omitted the praise, the day of vengeance. So let us distinctly separate the 40 days in the baptism of Jesus Christ. The 40, day, 40 days wilderness temptation, October 18 to 27, because that answers when the closing period of the sowing period, the missing 40 days, by which the kingdom of Christ, the spiritual kingdom, is to be set up, and the 40 days from Christ's resurrection to his ascension, by which that 40 days, brothers and sisters, by which the growing period commenced from the ascension of Christ, there is a missing number 40 days, and that is the mystical number 40, by which the premillennial literal kingdom will be set up. We will continue the subject on our next episode. May the good Lord bless you and have a beautiful, wonderful evening.